Prophet wasallam said that the example is that a person bathes in that river five times a day. What type of filth would remain on a person as Al-Hasan rahimahullah comments on this if he bathes five times a day? Think about a person who showers, shampoos, soaps up conditions five times a day, perfumes, everything. Physically speaking, can you imagine a person like that that showers five times a day? Can you imagine a person like that that takes a real shower five times a day? What are they going to smell like? What are they going to look like? How fresh will they be? The Prophet ﷺ is saying, imagine yourself spiritually bathing five times a day. And not all showers are the same. There, there's the sunnah. There, there are different brands of shampoo, different brands of, of soap, different fragrances, different ways in which you scrub yourself. Not every shower is the same. There is a two minute shower and there is a 20 minute shower. Not every one of them is the same. But what the ulama say when they comment on this is that a true salah, if you immersed yourself five times a day, a person could achieve wilaya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a, a friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just through that alone. Why? Because just tasting the sweetness of that five times a day, how are you going to go from that to the rest of your day? And continue thinking the same way, continue speaking the same way, continue looking at the same things. And Allah Azza wa continues and He says, وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ And the remembrance of Allah is greater. And the ulama say this is loaded with beauty as well. Is the, the remembrance of Allah greater in the salah or greater as a deterrence? Meaning, عَنِ النَّهِي عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ As deterring you from these types of evils throughout the day. What what is the extent to which this ayah is suggesting wala dhikrullahi akbar? And the scholars say a few things and we can reconcile them. Number one, can you imagine for a moment if in your prayer you were allowed to use your phone? And by the way, you're not allowed to use your phone in the prayer or in Salat al-Jum'ah, by the way. Can you imagine if in Salah you were able to scroll through your phone? Can you imagine if you were able to have conversations during Salah? I mean, you don't have to look further than Tawaf and Umrah and Hajj and the types of conversations that are ensuing there. Between the selfies and the conversations, I don't know how much dhikr some people can get in a matter of just seven rounds. Can you imagine if in your salah, the one time of the day, the, the, the five times of the day that you come to the prayer where you have to at least at the bare minimum, not talk about evil things, not say evil things, not listen to evil things, not look at evil things. Can you imagine if that was compromised? What a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're not allowed any of that. That is a rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a huge mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not allowed any of that, alhamdulillah. Because Allah knows how distracted we'd be in salah. We're already distracted enough just by the thoughts for, for what came before and what comes after the salah. But on top of that, Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah says, what is it that's going to prohibit a person from the effect of sin inside of them? It's the dhikr inside the salah. When your whole body is in a state of dhikr five times a day and you're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as Ibn Abbas ta'ala anhumah says and beyond that if a person is in a state of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the day then they don't even have to wait to be pulled to a full immersion of dhikr five times a day. What greater way to protect yourself, to protect your eyes, to protect your ears, to protect your tongue than being in a state of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the day. You can't guard yourself around the consistent signals of evil today unless you have a consistent spiritual habit of connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the only way. The more extreme those signals get, the more committed you have to be to those things that Allah azza wa jal put right in front of you. So what am I saying, dear brothers and sisters? Not all salahs are equal. But if you've been treating your salah, if you've been treating your five daily prayers as just an obligation you need to hurry up and get through and, and move on from, take a step back and remind yourself that Allah Azza wa Jal just gave you the greatest gift in these five prayers. Treat them right. Honor these five prayers. 